In this video, I'll be looking at moving material from a prior term. I'm going to go back to all courses to go back and look up my previous run of a course. I've got to scroll all the way down into past enrollments. I'm going to go back into my ethnobotany course. What I'm going to be looking at as information I'm going to need in the import process. I'm going to go to the syllabus and I'm going to take a look at, if I scroll down, here in the course summary, when was my first assignment due? That first assignment was due on August 26th, uh, 20, in fall, and I want to look at when the last assignment was due. The last assignment was the final, which was uh, due on December 9. So that gives me the dates I'm going to need as part of the import process. At that point, I can uh, now go back to my dashboard, scroll down to my unpublished courses for the upcoming term, uh, and it's this one I want. It's actually SC slash SS115 Ethnobotany. I'll go down to settings. And either on the right or in this case down at the bottom. I can import course content. At this screen, I'm going to tell it that I want to copy a Canvas course. I will be warned that it will overwrite. I've got to search for the course. So I'm going to go for SC slash SS115 Ethnobotany. I want the one from last fall. So I'll select that course. Tell it I want all content, and I'm going to go ahead and let it adjust the dates. That I'll still have to go in and customize these sorts of things, but it'll give me a, a crack at the, the dates. Uh, the only complication is I have to bear in mind where those dates are in the new calendar. That term in August started on 16. Uh, but the actual due date is back on 26. So the due date was back here on in the second week. This was uh, 16, add 7, 23, 24, 25, 26. So that due date translates to January 20th. And then I can, of course, give it a, a time. the beginning. Oh, sorry, that one goes over here. My, uh, that one goes over here. So I'm translating it one, one to one. January 2022, the second week. Uh, this one should indeed be the back in August. August 26th it was originally due. I moved my times off of midnight as you can see. The ending date was uh, back in this, uh, I'm already in December. The ending date was in December, on December 9th. That was a final. That was actually due at 6.20 p.m. So put that the right way in. 6.20 p.m. And the, the new date uh, for this will be that same day of finals, which will be in May on the 4th at the same time. The final schedule holds the same from term to term, so it should land in the same spot. With that done, I will have to adjust because the holidays are different, so some assignments will slew around, but it will land things close, and then I just have to do some edits on the, you know, the date. Uh, I'll get things close to where they belong. Uh, 
so with that done, I can then say import. And it's queued, which means it will take some time for this to, to load in. Of course, itself isn't that large, so it probably won't take that long to import. Uh, consisting of about five tests, uh, 15 some assignments, uh, a few other odds and ends. So I'll take a look at the issue. Um, I think I know what that might be. Yeah, it's an invasive plant submission from 08 April. I'll uh, just take a quick look at that particular error. I think I know where the error is. It won't be obvious. I'm going to go here. And the the error is here and the key is going to turn out to be this you wouldn't have to do this you could ignore this error it will have no effect on your assignment it's invisible it's an it's an error that stems from the way I, I tried to bring over some material from Schoology in the spring of 2021 and it keeps getting copied forward so that these two classes can come can come out they, they don't refer to anything um, there is there are ways to import material out of Schoology but it generates a lot of errors and there's all kinds of problems but you certainly don't have to that particular error would not affect the course in any way shape or form but I'll go ahead and clean that up and uh, save this one this one would not have had a due date because it was something that I put in, but um, uh, originally uh, it was a manually entered grade. So things have come in. They've now got due dates sitting in approximately the right place in the term. I'll have to go look at my calendar to make sure they're in the right place in the term. Let's drop all these different assignments into places they belong in the term and so I'll now can go through and edit them as I might normally do uh, these are some old materials that are still writing with the course they get copied term to term I probably should do some cleanup and delete them out they they were brought in a long time ago uh, I haven't necessarily done a lot of good house cleaning so. So with that done, I've got my course set up for spring, the start of the course. Uh, the uh, assignments are there. The modules are in place. You'll notice my module headers did not change. These are text headers. Because of the way I've structured my modules with dates in the modules, I will have to go in and edit those directly myself. This will be uh, on the 11th of January. So I'll need to do those headers manually. They are not part of the programmatic system. What's been updated are the assignments, the grades, um, other material is now in the course, uh, not the grades, sorry. They, um, grades aren't any grades yet. But what's been updated are the quizzes here. They're all on the new dates, so we can see. They've also translated over the available from until dates have come over and again I can edit these as I see fit but I've got a starting place I don't have to start from scratch everything's there also if I go back to uh, go down to settings for example it's brought over um, the other course details have come over including the course image I like to have a course image on my dashboard to, spruce up the dashboard a little bit and to uh, to give the courses a uh, image so that they are kind of visually distinct from each other besides just some color uh, uh, visual cues to what course a student is going into so you can see my dashboard 
for ethnobotany now has, has a picture on it. So that's the, the gist of, a, of um, importing a course. Uh, you'll notice it's already populated, ready to go with students. One thing I do have to remember to do after I've got everything edited, you'll notice it's come in published. The students can't actually see this material yet though because, in this case I have to go to the bottom, I have not yet published the course. The course remains unpublished. Once I've got all the dates correct, then I can publish the course. So despite the course having students in it, the students cannot uh, currently see any material in the course. It is not yet published. So if I go uh, back to a, uh, uh, let's go back into a, well that course is actually uh, probably in published mode already. I'm going this way. If I try to pull up the student view, the only the two most recent announcements will uh, will show uh, to them, uh, and the rest of the course is um, uh, the pieces are there, but you'll notice none of the assignments are there. So they can see a course is coming, um, but they can't do it. They can't work the assignments yet, uh, um, and I think, yeah. So they can see the pieces, but they can't do anything with it. I'm in student view, but I can't submit. So they can actually, because they're published internally, they can see the pieces, but they can't work on it. Um, uh, so they, they would be able to see it. If that was a concern to you, you would have to go into your modules and flip off your modules from this top publish if you wanted to actually hide modules. And indeed, many faculty do hide later modules farther down. I use dates to, to help the students focus and they can always fold these up and when you open it it will jump to the currently open panel. So that's a little bit of importing and some of the cleanup details and publishing details to deal with on the back side of that import process. Thank you for watching another one of my rambling videos. Let me know if you have any questions.